Coffee. It's one of those rare everyday beverages that you can actually choose your own level of involvement with. Now, it might be that you can only enjoy a cup, and I don't want to yuck anyone's yum, if it's single origin, artisan roast, and hand pressed. Or it could be, conversely, you see it as fuel. And in which respect, how it's made doesn't even matter. There's a good reason why we really get into coffee. It's super complex. In fact, it's about as complex as wine is. You think about the aspect of the trees and where they grow, the climate, the altitude, the fermentation of the beans, the roasting, the storage, the grinding, and ultimately the method of extraction of actually getting that coffee into your cup. We can actually hack these little beans and make them taste like pretty much anything. There's no reason why coffee cocktails should be one dimensional. As always, I break my drinks down into three sections. We have super simple, which means no special tools are required. We have mega tasty, which means you might have to make something for it. And we have ultra fancy, where maximum effort is required. With that being said, we should probably make some drinks. But first, we need to do some prep. So first off, we're gonna make something which is super easy to do, but packed with flavor and has a multitude of uses. We're gonna to lightly toast in a dry pan, 20 grams of light roast whole coffee beans and three grams of whole green cardamom pods. Toast these on a medium high heat until super fragrant and the beans have become glossy, but not at all browned. Once fragrant, add to a small jar, cover with 250 mils of Campari whilst the beans are still warm and label and set aside at room temperature for 48 hours. Once this is rested, you can filter it through a fine sieve and it's ready to use. This really simple infusion builds on those bright, grassy, mentholic notes from the cardamom and rounds off the intensely bitter Campari with warm orange clove coffee oils. It is killer. Once that's all done, you can leave it in the fridge for our drink later on. But first, let's make something else. Well, we can't talk about coffee without talking about the inimitable espresso martini. Created by one of the greatest bartenders of modern times, Dick Bradsall, it has been forever riffed upon with every spirit under the sun. So why stop now? This drink is super easy to set up. It's a teaspoon of the instant coffee of your choice to about 50 mils of freshly boiled water. Stir it up, set it aside for later. So to a jar or shaker, add 10 to 15 mils of gum, depending on how sweet you like it. This is just a two to one sugar to water syrup. 20 mils of your favorite coffee liqueur. Yes, that is a thing. My favorite is Jumping Goat from New Zealand. 30 mils of Glasshouse Whiskey. This is chock full of toffee apple notes, zero peat. And then add in 25 mils of your instant espresso, in inverted commas. It does help if this is a little warm, but you don't want it searingly hot. Add some ice to your jar or shaker, and then realize the recipe calls for a double shot of espresso, so pop some more of that in. Once everything's in, give it a nice long hard shake. The longer and harder you shake, the tighter the foam texture is gonna be on top, and it makes that mustache dip that much more delectable. Strain out into your fanciest glass. I don't think there's any need for a garnish here, although you could float some coffee beans on top if you're feeling fancy. This is the Instantesso Martini. Cheers. Back in the prep kitchen, we're gonna make an ultra cold brew concentrate. Now we've all had cold brew, right? It's like a much smoother, way less bitter version of French press or filter coffee. It leans on the fruitier aspects that coffee can offer. This recipe is an elevated cold brew that really plays up to those flavors. To a dry pan, add two grams of chili flakes, two grams of ground ginger, two grams of ground coriander seeds, and one gram of ground nutmeg. You'd also want to grate the zest of a whole orange and leave that aside. We'll be needing that later. Warm the spices through until fragrant. We are aiming to wake them up, not add color. Should be about 60 seconds. Once warmed, add the whole thing to a French press jug or something similar. Add in five grams of that fresh orange peel and 100 grams of freshly ground coffee. Then top the whole thing with 600 mils of room temperature filtered water. Stir it up for about 60 seconds and then let it rest for 24 hours, stirring every six hours or so. The second cocktail we're gonna be making today is the Cardoffi Bulvarie. 
First thing we're gonna do is add plenty of ice to our glass and stir this until everything becomes nice and frosty. Set that aside and we'll make our drink. To a mixing glass or jar, we're gonna add 25 mils of our triple C, that coffee cardamom Campari, 20 mils of your favorite vermouth, and 40 mils of the delicious Mictas rye. Now you can use any high rye bourbon or a straight rye whiskey. It works equally as well. Add some ice and stir until the glass becomes frosted and chilly to the touch. It's super important to taste as we're going along. Too much or too little dilution can ruin this drink and so it needs to be perfect. Pour out into your pre-chilled glass using the business end of a regular everyday fork. I'll try not to make a mess. Spritz the top of the drink and the glass with a squeeze of orange oils from a wee orange coin. It's rich and warming with a hefty bitter punch whilst finishing bright and green. It's the Cardoffi Boulevardier. Cheers. 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 Okay, so let's finish off our ultra cold brew concentrate. Give the French press a press and filter as finely as possible. In my case, I'm putting it through a 50 micron super bag, which is a chef's tool sometimes called jelly bags, and then through a super fine coffee filter. Now this is a cold brew concentrate, so it is pretty pokey. If you do want to drink it by itself, add two to one water with some ice, and it will wake you right up in the morning. This recipe in my eyes is everything you want from a cold brew, whilst packing substantial baking spice and even a little heat. Now we put so much effort into this cold brew, Let's make some cocktails with it. So the final drink we're making today is a cold brew G&T. This is like a brunch drink that you find in swanky cafes that make their own kombucha. Très chic, magnifique. So add to your swankiest highball glass, 50 mils of that fancy cold brew concentrate straight from the fridge, 10 mils of Amontillado sherry, which is kind of dry and nutty, 40 mils of your favorite gin, citrus heavy gins work really well in this, playing on those kind of citric notes from the coffee itself. Add a few cubes of beautifully clear ice, give it a little stir, and top with your tonic water of choice. This drink may not look like much, and coffee tonics tend to divide people anyway, but for me, this is one of the brightest and fruitiest expressions of what coffee can offer. This is a cold brew g and Enjoy. So there you go team, who says coffee cocktails have to be one dimensional? Check out the description below for full recipes and links to ingredients used. Give us a comment if you want to see us tackle any one thing in particular in the future. Give us a like and subscribe and you'll stay up to date when new videos get released. But until next time, take it easy, be good, love ya, bye.